Hello, hello. So today we're going to be talking about a very important topic, which is mast cell activation and long COVID and ME CFS. So we're going to talk about a couple of different aspects of it. We're going to talk about, first of all, what mast cells actually are, what their roles, what their role is in our body. And we're also going to talk about how they're involved with long COVID and ME-CFS. And then we're going to dig a little bit deeper and go into why most people with long COVID and ME-CFS and all of these other chronic illnesses like MS, like fibromyalgia, uh, pretty much any chronic illness you can name, rheumatoid arthritis, why there why people are having mast cell activation syndrome with these chronic illnesses and what the cause of the mast cell activation syndrome is and the exciting news is that once you know what the cause is the root cause then you can actually take care of that you can treat that so we're going to get into there into that in just a second if you're not familiar with me, I'm Laurie Rivers, and I am the founder, the creator of the Long COVID and MECFS Holistic Healing Summit. It was the very first one back in 2021. And I'm also the creator of the Relief and Transformation course. And this is how to recover from MECFS and Long COVID and these other chronic illnesses. We actually take you by the hand and show you step by step, step how to get that full recovery. So um, my, my personal story and the reason that I'm so passionate about this is several different reasons, but I actually developed severe MECFS back in my 20s and had it for eight to 10 years to the point where many days I couldn't feed myself, couldn't get up the stairs or, um, you know, I was bed bound for a good, good portion of that. And I know that some of you have experienced that out there and um, I'm so sorry because it sucks so badly. That doesn't even begin to sum it up. And then for those of you who maybe you're not bed bound, but you still have this chronic illness and it still just drastically reduces your quality of life. So anyway, that was my first experience with it. I started coaching people after that because there was so little information out there about how to approach these illnesses properly uh, without, you know, being getting yourself into a push crash cycle and all those different things. So I started coaching people way back then. That was over 20 years ago. And then when the pandemic hit, I developed long COVID. Now it was not severe at all. And I was able to move through that in under eight months, which as you may know for long COVID is a very short amount of time. And I, I just followed my own, you know, I followed my own program. And that's why I developed the online course, the online relief and transformation course. Now, the third component of this, and this is where it gets really exciting to me, and I hope to you, is that I had had lifelong fibromyalgia, what I call weather-dependent fibromyalgia. So I had days where I couldn't get off the sofa, I couldn't go to school when I was a kid, in and out of hospitals, all that kind of stuff. And um, they couldn't figure out, you know, there was nothing wrong with me. But I still, I, I and, and all sorts of other symptoms, which again, you're probably very familiar with those weird, you know, this weird conglomeration of symptoms. But, but anyway, I would have those, you know, a lot of pain, muscle weakness, um, brain fog, those types of days. And then maybe even the next day, or maybe two weeks later or whatever, I would have what I call my Wonder Woman days. And on those days, I could do anything. I mean, 
I, I had limitless energy. And, uh, you know, luckily with the fibromyalgia, I of course didn't experience the post-exertional malaise. So I was able to, you know, exercise a lot on my Wonder Woman days. So when I lived in Los Angeles, most of my days were Wonder Woman days. Then when I moved back to the Southeast, uh, most of my days were the sofa days or the bed days. So I finally put two and two together and realized that that was the trigger for, for my body. But I discovered, ran across, whatever you want to, however you want to call it, the underlying root cause of this lifelong fibromyalgia for me. And it turns out that it's also the underlying root cause for any chronic illness. And I know that that sounds kind of um, overzealous or over something, but uh, the more that you learn about this, the more you you go, oh, wow, okay, I get it. So anyway, I'm not, I, I want to go into our um, mast cell activation syndrome stuff. You can definitely watch my uh, masterclass video. It's I'll, I'll put a link to it down below and you'll learn, learn more about all that. So anyway, let's talk about mast cells. So first of all, let's talk a little bit about the relationship of mast cells with ME-CFS and long COVID. Now, mast cells have also been linked to a lot of other chronic illnesses. There was a study done actually back in the I think the late 1800s with multiple sclerosis, where they found that the brain lesions that are um, that you know come with multiple sclerosis, that there were abnormal numbers of mast cells within those brain lesions. So fast forward to 2017, there was a study done by uh, Goyen, Johnston, and Associates, and they found that there was a significant increase in the mast cell populations in moderate and severe MECFS patients compared with their healthy controls. And I'm sure that there have been other long COVID studies that are very similar to that. So, and and of course, as we know, long COVID and MECFS, they're they're basically the same thing. They just have some different flavors, but even within long COVID, there are different flavors and within MECFS, there are different flavors. And there are some reasons for that, that maybe I'll talk about another time. So these mast cells, their, their immune cells, and you may know this already, but you may not if you're new to mast cells and mast cell activation syndrome and what it is, these, these mast cells, they are, uh, you know, the mast cell activation syndrome, like I said earlier, they're also involved in all of these other chronic illnesses. Um, if you, and, and especially also in things like allergies and asthma and these, um, you know, when people have anaphylactic responses to, to certain foods or whatever it might be. Um, also, associated with inflammatory bowel disease and with different types of cancers and heart disease and rheumatoid arthritis. So it's not just MECFS. It's not just long COVID. It's not just MS. So when the mast cell activation syndrome is also found in all of these different chronic illnesses, to me, it starts to make us think, well, okay, there's got to be a common link here. There's got to be a common root cause. So again, we're going to get to that in just a bit. But um, so let's, let's talk about the job of mast cells, because ultimately they're actually a really good thing when they're functioning proper, properly. They're a really important part of our natural defense against invaders in our body. So this means parasites, this means viruses. And when I say parasites, we're talking about 
all sorts of parasites. That's That includes bacteria, that includes fungus, things like candida, that includes worms, it includes protozoa, it includes anything that's in your body that's taking your body's nutrients and uh, causing you problems. So anyway, what mast cells do, it's incredibly complex and so intelligent. They, they are involved with number one, they release immune molecules like cytokines and chemokines, which is part of the inflammation process, which again, inflammation is actually a good thing when it's happening properly and when it's not happening all the time. Uh, they also release those mast cells, they also release histamine. And really overall, they're getting different parts of our immune system going because on their own, they're not enough, right? There are different parts of our immune system, the T cells, the, the tons of other different types of cells, and they all have different roles. But those mast cells, they're like the first responders. They're the first to the scene. And they're patrolling our airways, our intestines, uh, our skin, and, and other places. And they're the first ones that set off the alarm. So when, when those mast cells notice a threat, whether it's a parasite or a virus, then they're causing like a chain reaction, really, of all these different immune molecules. And... If it becomes overactive, then things like cytokine storms start happening, right? Uh, so, but but really, again, when when it's happening properly, then it's it's a very good thing. They also will um, disrupt the blood brain barrier, which is important because we need to have more of the immune system in there if we have an affection. So this reaction, this chain reaction response to our mast cells doing their job, this has been keeping us alive, keeping humans alive for many, many, many decades and, and you know, many, many years much longer than decades. <laughs> so again, it's a good thing. Uh, they are white blood cells and they're actually created in the, in the marrow, in the bone marrow. And then they live in the body tissue, the tissues that are exposed to our external environment. And, you know, so for example, let's take our gastrointestinal tract, for example, the lining. So if we swallow something, let's say that we swallow some type of parasite, whether it's the eggs or the larva or the full grown. And if those intruders aren't destroyed by our stomach acid and it goes into our intestines, then the mast cells are there to start that chain reaction and to start the process of our immune system dealing with the parasites. And so those mast cells rapidly release these other immune molecules like the cytokines, like the chemokines, and even enzymes actually, which help to destroy the parasites. And then that chain reaction causes other immune cells to become engaged. So they're doing all these awesome things to protect us. Then there's also when we want our immune system to remember parasites that it's beaten already, and this is called the adaptive immune response. And so this means that some of those cells that have been recruited to help to take care of this particular type of parasite, that some of those cells are going to remember that in the future. So that, that means that if that parasite, that particular type of parasite is introduced to the body again in the future, that the whole process of taking care of the immune system, taking care of that parasite is going to happen faster. So 
these mast cells are found in high concentrations during parasitic infection. Okay, so I want you to keep that in the back of your head. And again, this is not just when we say parasites, it's not just worms, it is any type of foreign invader. And then we're also talking about, you know, viruses here, but but specifically for today, we're talking about these these other bad microbe infections. Okay. So in it's really interesting because there are a couple of reasons that the immune system can go kind of haywire. And one of them is because some worms and some protozoa, some parasites, period, can actually secrete a protein. They produce a protein that inhibits the whole inflammatory immune response. Then in other ways, it can actually ramp it up too much. These parasites can ramp it up too, too much. And in fact, there are at least 17 different ways that parasites can cause immune dysfunction that we know about. We don't even know the, you know, the full, um, not enough research has been done there. But basically on the one hand, if the mast cells don't become activated, then they're not starting that chain reaction to activate the uh, to activate the entire immune system to deal with the parasites, right? But then on the other side, mast cell activation can also be uh, kind of get out of control. And again, not just by worms, but by different types of parasites, um, protozoa, which are the single cell parasites. And then there are also the disease causing bacteria. Those can, can cause mast cell activation syndrome. But then also when you think about it, if you have a persistent parasitic infection, be that candida or worms or the single cell protozoa or bacteria, whatever it might be, then your body is constantly trying to take care of it. And if it gets past the point with these, these what I call hidden infections, if it gets past a certain point, then your immune system can't take care of it. But the mast cells, as you know, the first responders, they're constantly saying, hey, we need to take care of this. Hey, we need to take care of this. Hey, we need to take care of this. And they're still releasing histamine and they're still doing their job, right? So this is where that overactive immune system can, you know, where it comes into play. Uh, you know, it's, it's frustrating because there's not a lot of research in this area, but when you start to think about it in these terms, it makes sense. I did do a wonderful interview with Dr. Afrin, who is an expert in the area of mast cell activation syndrome, and he goes into all the science of it. You can take a look at that on my um, YouTube channel. You'll find it there. And that goes more into the science and the research of it. But, you know, he even says that there just hasn't been a lot done, even though we've known about a disproportionately large number of mast cells in the body when the body is dealing with chronic illnesses. So let's talk about some of the symptoms that happen when we have a lot of mast cells that are activated. And again, why are they activated like this? It's because we're dealing with all these different types of parasites. So, of course, you know, if you're dealing with a virus or something like that, then it's going to be activated as well. But with the viruses, that should be taken care of by the body, by the, you know, the mast cells and the wonderful chain reaction there within a 
relatively short amount of time versus these chronic illnesses that we're talking about here. So when people do have this, this, these chronic illnesses, even if the viruses are still activated, it's the, it's indicative of these parasitic infections underneath. And that's why the body hasn't been able to deal with the viruses fully. So, um, right. And, and the, these resulting symptoms can range completely widely all over the place, which you've probably been experiencing. And they're not always related to a gut infection, which is, you know, th there isn't a certain, okay, if you have this symptom and this symptom and this symptom, then that's a mast cell activation issue, which again, underneath that is a parasite issue. So that's, you know, why it's uh, so one of the many reasons that it's so hard for us to know. But some of these symptoms can include with the skin, let's start there since it's the first one that we, you know, it's kind of our first line of defense there. We might have hives or swelling or rashes or itching or flushing. Our eyes might be itchy or irritated or watering. Uh, we might have runny nose, might have itching or swelling of the tongue or the lips or the throat. For the lungs, we might have trouble breathing. We might experience wheezing or asthma. And then for the heart and the blood vessels, people experience low blood pressure, rapid heart rate, heart arrhythmias. And then, of course, you know, the stomach and intestinal stuff. So that would include cramping and nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, abnormal abdominal pain, and with the nervous system then as well, which I know that that's such a big part of long COVID and ME-CFS and any of these other illnesses really as well, that's going to be headache, confusion, fatigue, uh, the brain fog, and yeah, so it's it's just a fascinating intertwining of all these things, especially when you when you watch that master class, you're gonna start to understand so much more about why it is that you're experiencing what it is that you're experiencing. Then there are also symptoms like anemia or bleeding disorders, bone pain or muscle pain, enlarged liver, enlarged spleen, enlarged lymph nodes. And then of course you have the super fun things like depression. Well, I mean, none of what we've been talking about is fun, but things like, like mood swings or problems concentrating or depression or the anxiety, which I know is a, a big problem, both of those. And you know, and then of course, some people end up developing anaphylactic reactions. So, uh, you know, again, these, these mast cells, they release histamine, which as many of you know, can cause some of these really tough symptoms. And this is why some of you I know have had great responses to antihistamines. And that can work really well for some people to reduce symptoms and sometimes even to help with sleeping if you've been having trouble sleeping. And of course, they're not for everyone, but reducing that histamine in the body can make a big difference. And of, and of course, you know, we want to get as much sleep as possible because that helps with the healing process. Um, and, you know, we do have today several cutting edge doctors saying that they believe actually that MCAS is either at the root, that's mast cell activation syndrome, is either at the root of long COVID and ME-CFS, or at least it's a big part of these illnesses and, and that related chronic illnesses could be the same thing. There's a really interesting book called The Plot Against Asthma and Allergy Patients. 
Uh, it's by Dr. Felix, and I'm not even going to try to say his last name because it's <laughs> very difficult. But um, I, I got it on Amazon a couple of years ago. And I don't know if it's still there or not. But this this Dr. Felix, he observed that histamine therapy stimulates the body's ability to heal itself. And he actually treated hundreds of asthma, allergy, migraine patients who were dependent on maintenance drugs, you know, along with all their negative effects. And in his book, he explains the biochemistry and the genetics involved in, you know, in these disorders. And he shows how to repair those defects, or at least how to make them tolerable, right? So again, which, which is this histamine therapy or antihistamine therapy? So, you know, again, when we take a look at mast cells produce histamine, right? And so we have this overabundance of histamine from the mast cells because the mast cells are activated because of the parasitic infections. So our body is constantly responding by the mast cells creating the histamine. So again, even if we don't have an active viral load in our body like COVID, or if you developed ME-CFS from stress and didn't have a viral onset, that mast cell activation is still happening pretty full, you know, very full on actually, because why again? <laughs> because our bodies are still trying to fight off the parasites that are still there. So these doctors like Dr. Felix, you know, they, they know about the histamine connection. They know about the mast cell activation connection, but they, they haven't quite backtracked and said, hey, you know what? What is it that's causing the mast cell activation? Let's take a look at parasites. And oh, that could definitely be causing the mast cell activation syndrome. So let's treat the parasites first, <laughs> you know? Um, or they could even start with the antihistamines, which a lot of doctors are, are doing now with long COVID and ME-CFS. Again, yay, great. Um, because though, you know, antihistamines are so much better than so many of the other drugs that are out there. But but also at the same time, treat those parasites like we do in the relief and transformation full course, uh, you know, as they're taking the antihistamines. And I think that that is ultimately going to be a, you know, a great combo, a great way to go as long as the, you know, the parasite treatment drugs don't interact with the antihistamines, which most of them don't. But, you know, again, these these mast cells they are working for us but until we get rid of those hidden infections till we get rid of those parasites then it's just going to keep happening and we don't want to have to be on antihistamines for the rest of our lives and we don't want to have to be you know, dealing with these symptoms for the rest of our lives either, because the antihistamines can only take us so far, right? So we want to treat those parasites, treat those parasites, right? And, you know, again, those mast cells, they're, they're just not functioning properly. They may have mutated, they're excessive, but it's like, okay, well, the underlying reason that they're not functioning properly is the parasites. And maybe this has been realized and recognized by some of the medical community or some of the, you know, the scientific community, but there is no money in treating parasites. Um, it's a lot more lucrative to give people immunosuppressive drugs, 
for the rest of their lives. And, you know, th there are tons of really great, well-meaning doctors and companies out there. So I don't want to get super negative about that, but you do kind of have to wonder, you know, what's the reason that that hasn't been taken a look at? So I just, I want for you to know that I, I know how it is to have lost hope and to feel like you've lost your life and to just be in a state of, you know, I, I just don't want to live like this anymore. I, I have been there. The thing is that you don't have to, it's such, I, I really want for you to know that because we have, we do have these solutions right now. We have the relief and transformation course where, like I said, I just, we take you by the hand and take you through all the way to complete recovery. You have to stick with it. You know, you have to take the steps and you, and it, it's not a, it's not always an easy process, especially at the beginning, but, um, you know, it's so many students from all over the world are either well on their way to complete recovery or my personal clients who have completed, you know, they've completed the full treatment course and, and done the whole relief and transformation plan and they have fully recovered. And, you know, I've had some amazing success stories that I'll be sharing with you in the coming months. Well, I mean, I've shared my success story with you, but a little bit, but, but I'll be so excited to be sharing these, these wonderful people's success stories with you. Just as an example, one of the current relief and transformation students, she was having trouble before even just walking for 10 minutes without causing a crash. And she is now able to walk for an hour and a half. And that happened within literally within a month, maybe even shorter than that. Um, and she hasn't even, that's without even starting the actual treatment yet. That was just with the things that we start with, the things like the eating plan and taking some, um, some new supplements, but we want to get you to the place where you don't have to take a whole boatload of supplements anymore. Yeah, that's the, that's one of the goals. And that's, you know, one of the places that you get to, um, you know, and, and what we're talking about here again is a full recovery because we're addressing the root cause and that takes care of all the histamine issues that takes care of all the mast cell, you know, issues. So, um, we, I, I would really love to find some doctors who are well-versed in this area or who are even willing and interested to, to learn about it because you just don't run across them very often, unfortunately, or, you know, they just don't have the time to, to learn about it, but hopefully you can either find one of those doctors or, you know, we do that through the relief and transformation course. We actually treat these hidden infections. So again, if you're new to all this, if you're here for the first time and you haven't watched the masterclass for the relief and transformation course for, you know, how to recover, I'll put that link before. The way that you can get started right now is changing the way that you eat. Even if you think that you have been eating super duper healthy and you you may have been, but there are some little tweaks that need to be made in order to basically to not be feeding the parasites as much. Now anything that you eat is going to feed them to a certain degree, but um you you want to cut down on how much you're you're feeding them basically. And this is what the, you know, the relief and transformation eating plan. We do that. We go through that full plan in the membership program and then in also in the full relief and transformation course. So you'll find that in both of those places. 
And if you want the basics of it, there's another video I did about what to eat and what not to eat. And you can find that in my YouTube channel. So, you know, go and start changing your diet, start learning about parasites. And then when you're ready to create your plan, your full recovery plan, make sure to reach out to us. Don't wait because you you don't have to to live like this. You know, it's a <laughs> I just have to tell you that it's amazing what starts to happen for you physically when you start to get rid of these parasites, when you start to pass them. And it's really interesting because the more of them you pass, you start to feel better and better and better and more and more normal. And you're, you know, you're like, oh, I can eat these foods again. You know, even, even though I got over long COVID within those eight months, I developed a crazy intolerance to, um, to all vegetables. <laughs> so I had to eat carnivore, which is fine. It's, you know, it's fine to eat carnivore, but I had to eat carnivore up until I fully treated these parasites. So, you know, I still stick with the healthy, super healthy foods, but oh my gosh, I, I can actually eat them now. And now I'm consistently having Wonder Woman days pretty much every day. You know, I, I'm not dealing with that lifelong fibromyalgia that I, I had from ever since I can remember those days or weeks or months where I just couldn't move and couldn't think. So there's there's no more of the pain, no more, no more of the brain fog, no more of the weak muscles or the emotions all over the place. And it's it's all because the parasites, they add this strain onto your body because of the toxins that they produce and because they are taking all of our nutrients and because they actually carry other microbes that they infect us with. It's, it's a whole thing. It's really crazy. Um, and, and again, you know, our immune system is constantly fighting, trying to fight off these parasites with the mast cells and the other immune cells. So if you treat the parasites, then your immune system can like breathe and relax and function the way that it's supposed to function. So make sure to watch the masterclass training. And if you're at the place where you would like support, uh, if you don't have a doctor that is gonna help you to, to treat these parasites, we do have a plan. We help people all over the world. Um, and we can help you. And you know what? I would love to do that. I would love to help you out. I would love for you to be our next success story and to interview you for, for this channel about your amazing recovery.